Hi class, in this lesson we're going to take a look at section 12.1 which has to do with the fundamental counting principle. And the fundamental counting principle figures out the amount of ways that you can do something. And the key here is that you can just take out the amount of ways to do each separate event and multiply them together and it'll give you the overall ways of doing something. You can read this definition on your own if you push pause. Uh, for example, if I've got the digits 0 through 9, how many five-digit numbers can be constructed according to the following criteria? Okay, um, so the number has to be odd and greater than 50,000. And so what we're looking at is with these restrictions, we have two places that are pretty much set for us. At least we have a small range of numbers. And that's right here with the five and the last number. So it has to be greater than 50,000. Digits can be repeated, but the, the overall number has to be odd. What that's referring to is this last number here. So that's basically saying this guy can be 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. And then it also said it has to be greater than 50,000, which means that this first number has to be uh, 6, 7, 8, or 9. In other words, it can't be 5 or smaller. So what that means is there's four different numbers that can be in this first location. In the second location, there can be 0 through 9, which is 10 different numbers. In this third location, there can be 0 through 9 again, so 10 different numbers. In the fourth location, we can also add 0 through 9, so there's 10 different numbers that can be there. In the last location, there's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, half the numbers, so there's only 5 numbers that can work there. So to figure out how many actual different number combinations you can make, you take these numbers, or the uh, amount of numbers that can be in each specific location, and you just multiply them using the fundamental counting principle. So five times, four times 10 times the 10 times 10 times five. So if we just throw that into our calculator, which mine apparently is not working, here we go. Uh, 4 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 5 gives us 20,000 different ways that we can make a number that is odd and greater than 50,000. Okay? Let's take a look at the next one here. So in this next problem, we're taking a look at how many ways can four coins be flipped. And in this situation, we've got four different coins, and you're flipping each one. So if there's one, two, three, four different coins, what we're looking at is this first coin can have two ways of it occurring, heads and tails. The second coin has the same situation, heads and tails. The third coin has the same situation, heads and tails. And the fourth coin can also have heads and tails. So heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. So to figure out how many different ways this could actually happen, well, you could get heads, 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 heads. You could get heads, heads, tails, tails. There's all sorts of ways that this can happen, but the easiest way to figure out the whole size of the sample space is you multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the fourth power, also known as 16. So there are 16 different ways that we could actually list out different outcomes of flipping these coins. And so... There's the uh, next problem for us. Next problem says, how many ways can three dice, uh, red, green, blue, it doesn't actually matter what color the dice are, how many ways can they be rolled? Well, there's six different ways for the first dice to be rolled, six different ways for the second dice to be rolled, and six different ways for this dice, the blue dice to be rolled. And that's because we have numbers one through six. One through six here and one through six here. So if I just multiply six times six times six, so six to the third power, you should get 216 different outcomes that we could have uh, different ways to roll these dice. Okay, So Matthew is working as a summer intern for a TV station, wants to vary his outfit by wearing different combinations of coats, pants, shirts, and ties. He has three sports coats, so we're going to keep track of that, three coats, and then five pairs of pants. He's got seven shirts, and he's got four ties. How many different uh, ways can he select an outfit consisting of coat, pants, shirt, tie? So basically all you have to do is multiply the different quantities. It's 3 times 5 times 7 times 4, and we result in 420 different outfits that he can actually wear to his uh, internship job.
fundamental accounting principle, pretty basic, is you just multiply the quantities of each, uh, each thing and you get your overall sample space size. So here we go, we got a locker at a fitness center. And so we have a five, enter five digits in order from the set zero through nine, how many different keypad patterns are possible? And there's a few different possibilities. So any digits can be used in any position and repetition is allowed. So for A, all we do is say, all right, well, there's five different locations, one, two, three, four, five. Well, in the first place, I could add zero through nine. So this has 10 different numbers I could put there. The second one, I have zero through nine. So that's 10 different numbers I could have there. Third one has zero through nine, also 10. Fourth one has 10, and the last one has 10. So this is 10 to the fifth power, or one with five zeros after it. So there are 100,000 different combinations if any digits are used in any order. Okay, B says, this is A. B says the digit zero cannot be used as the first digit, but otherwise any digit can be used in any position and repetition is allowed. So all B does is it changes this first number to say, well, I can't have zero here. So that just shortens me instead of zero through nine, I have one through nine, which makes there nine places, nine different numbers that I can have there. So it's nine, the second one's still 10, third one's still 10, fourth one's still 10, fifth one's still 10. So all I have to do is multiply these numbers and I get um, one with four zeros after it times nine. So you're just gonna get 90,000. So that takes off quite a bit by, by reducing it by one. There's a whole, whole 10,000 there. So, any digits can be used in any position, but repetition is not allowed. Okay, well, that changes things dramatically, because in the first one, we can still have 10 numbers. It says we can use any number there, and that changes as soon as we get to the second place. I can't use whatever number was here. So, if I used a, if I used a 1 here, I can't use 1 over here. So, that means now I only have 9 numbers that are available. In the second one, I've used two different numbers, so there's only 8 numbers left. In the, in the fourth place, I've got, uh, um, I've used one, two, three different numbers, so now I've got one less than that. And then now I've used four different numbers, so now I've only got six available. So this, I get to multiply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, and that means I've got 30,240 different uh, combinations or, that I can have with my lock if they're all uh, different numbers. So here's the actual thing. All right, here we go. You are taking a multiple choice test with eight questions. Each question has six answer choices, one, uh, one correct answer per question. If you select one of these choices for each question and leave nothing blank, in how many ways can you answer the questions? All right, so we've got eight questions. So let's list one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there are six choices to each one, okay? So six, six, six. Six, 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 six. Six choices, okay? If you select one of these choices for each question and leave nothing blank, how many ways can you answer the questions? Well, all we have to do is multiply six that many times to figure out how many different total combinations there are. So this is really just six to the eighth power. And so six to the eighth power is a very large number. One, six, seven, nine, six, one, six. So a million, six hundred thousand, seven hundred. Yeah, 79, 616. So we're just taking the amount of ways that you have to do each option and multiplying them together is all the fundamental counting principle is asking you to do. Okay. So radio stations have call letters consisting of a W, K, something. So then they tell you seven different letters. So W or K, or so it could be W, K, 9, 5, whatever, and then R, K, B, K, W. So um, we've got seven more letters after that, not numbers, if I said numbers before, uh, followed by seven letters. So we've got to have W or K. So in the first position, I could have W. Second position, I could have well, W or K, sorry. Second position, I could have uh, K or W as well. And then here we've got uh, seven letters. So two, three, so another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Now, in each one of these locations, we can have any of the letters, um, even including W or K. So we've got the whole alphabet in each one of those locations. So what that means is that in these first places, these first locations, uh, it says a W or K, so it limits it by 
two things in each of these locations. It doesn't say that we can't use, if we use W here, it doesn't say that we can't use W again. It just says it has a W or K. But um, I apologize. It says the radio stations have call letters consisting of a W or K, followed by seven letters. I'm sorry. The second position is gone. I made too many. Here we go. Sorry about that. Um, so we've got the first position is W or K. Then after that, there are seven different letters. So the first position is a 2 uh, because we have W or K. There's two different things that can be there. But each of these following places, we can have 26 different letters in each one of these following uh, places. 26, 26, 6, 26, 26, and 26. So in other words, to figure out how many different call letters there can be, well, the first one has 2, and then the last one is going to be 26 to the seventh power because there are seven different 26s here. And so if we multiply 26 to the seventh and then times that by two, we get how many total call letters are possible, which is 16062620315. So fundamental counting principle, just multiplying the amount in each location sorry for my little screw up at the beginning of not paying attention to the directions, uh, that there was only one uh, W or K. We weren't having it twice. And then from there, there's multiple 26s. Let's take a look at the next one here. Experiment and social interaction. Ten people will sit in ten seats in a row. How many ways can this be done? Well, you've got ten people, and what that means is that in each location, we have a set amount. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In the first location, the first chair, if you're if you're just going on through, there's ten different people that can go there. Well, if one person sits there, now there's only nine people left here. If two people have sat down, now there's only eight people left. And so on. Now there's seven people left. Six people are left. Five, four, three, two, one. And so what we do is we actually multiply here ten times each consecutive number below it. And what we're going to uh, learn in the next lesson is that this is actually called 10 factorial. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment in the next lesson. But anyway, it just means you multiply each letter or each uh, number that's consecutively less than that on your calculator, and that's called a factorial. This is called 10 factorial. But again, I'll talk about it more in the next lesson. Uh, if you have your calculator, your calculator will do that, and then it's actually multiplying this out. But if you take your calculator and multiply 10 times 9, times 8, times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1, you get 362880 0, 0 different ways that you can see, seat these 10 people in 10 different chairs. And yes, that's actually the truth. And yeah, that is a very large different amount of ways you could sit 10 people. I believe that's it. Yes. So that's it for this section. If you have any other problem-specific questions, please uh, email me through the Ask My Instructor feature.